This is an SQL problem on LeetCode. I'll show you what this problem is and show you three possible solutions for it. This is problem number 183 on LeetCode called Customers Who Never Order. It's tagged as easy. Let's see if that's true. I've got the link to this problem page in the description if you want to open it. In this problem, there are two tables, one for customers, which has an ID and a name, and another for orders, which has an ID and a customer ID. There's a description of each of these columns. The orders table has a column called customer ID, which refers to the ID in the customer table. This is called a foreign key and it's how we relate the customer and their order. So what's the question that we need to answer? It says here, write a solution to find all customers who never order anything. Return the result table in any order. In the example section, we can see some sample data. We see four customers and two orders. The orders are for customer three and one. So the customers who never order anything are customers two and four, as they don't have any orders. The output shows the customer names of Henry and Max. These are customers two and four in the sample data. So this is the expected output. How can we write this in SQL? LeetCode has a built-in SQL editor on the right of the page, which we will use to write our queries and solve our problem. If you want to try this in your own editor, you can get the create and insert statements by clicking on this SQL schema button here. You can then copy these statements into an SQL script and run them on your own database. For this demo, we'll use the LeetCode editor, so let's close this part. Let's write our first query. We'll start with a simple select star from customers. We can click the run button here to run our query. We need to be logged in to run our code. After a moment, we'll see this panel here. It says wrong answer. I think it's treated our execution as a possible answer, and that's okay as we didn't put any logic to find customers who have not ordered. We can see the input in this panel, and we can scroll down to see both tables. In the output section, we see the result of our select star query. The expected section shows what the results should be. This is handy. It compares the actual and the expected to see if we are correct. So I can think of three ways to solve this problem. Let's see if that's true. Let's try the first method, which involves a join. We can start by selecting the ID and the name from the customers table. We want to join to the orders table. We do this by adding a join. We'll use an inner join. Now, what do we join on? The question said that the ID in the customer table matches to the custom ID in the orders table. So let's join on those columns. Let's add the columns from the orders table to the select clause. Now we can run the query. We can see a runtime error here. It says column ID in field list is ambiguous. This has happened because we specified the ID in the select clause, but this column exists in both tables, and the database doesn't know which table to look at. The way to solve this is to specify the table name for each column. We can also move the columns to separate lines, just to make it easier to read. Let's run this again. The result says wrong answer. We can see our results here and how it is different to the expected results. We have two rows, one for Joe and one for Sam, but the expected results show Henry and Max. Our columns are also different, but we'll come back to that. I've deliberately added more columns here so we get a better understanding of the data we are seeing before removing the unnecessary columns. So what's happened here? We have only shown customers who have placed an order. This has happened because we have used an inner join. An inner join will find rows that match between two tables and only show rows that match. It has shown customers who have orders and excluded customers without orders. This is the opposite of what we want. What can we do? We can change our query to use a different join type. We'll change it from inner join to left join. This means that it will show all records from the table on the left of this left join keyword, which in this example is customers. It will show any matches from the table on the right, which is orders. If there are no matches, then null values are shown. Let's run this query. We still see a wrong answer, but we can see that more customers are shown. Joe and Sam are still shown, 
and Henry and Max are shown as well. They have null values for the second ID and customer ID columns, which are from the orders table. We only want to see these two rows, where there are these null values. Let's see if we can filter on that. We'll add a WHERE clause to check if the orders.id is null. We can run this and we get the wrong answer. We scroll down and see that there is nothing shown in our output. Why is that? We had some rows with a null value. Well, it's because in SQL, when we want to compare something to null, we can't use the equal sign. A null value is an unknown value and is not equal to anything else. To compare to null, we need to use is null instead of equals null. So we can change our query to use is null. We can run this query. In our results, we can see two rows. This is better. We can see the two rows we want, but it's showing as a wrong answer because we have more columns than are needed when compared to the expected output. We only need to see the customer name column. Let's remove all other columns from our query and run it again. Oh, it still says wrong answer. Why is that? Let's have a look. We see one column and the correct rows, but we can see our column is called name and the expected column is called customers. It's wrong because the column header is wrong. Fortunately, there's a way in SQL to rename a column header in our result, and it's using a column alias. To do this, we put the word as after our column in the select clause, then add a new name. We'll call ours customers with a capital C. Let's run this again. It says accepted. All right, we've got the right answer. We can scroll down and see the expected output matches our output. So that's one way to solve this problem. What are the other two ways I was thinking of? The second method is using a subquery. A subquery is a select query that exists within another query. It's helpful in many situations and I think it can be used to solve this problem. Let's go back to select our custom names without any other filtering. We run this and see the output of all four customer names. How can we exclude the customers we don't want to see? We want to show customers that don't have an order. Said another way, we want to see all customer records that are not in the list of customers in the order table. We can implement this with a WHERE clause. We add a WHERE clause and then customers.id. Then we specify the word NOT IN and then open and close brackets. We want to show customers where their ID is not in a specific list of values. We could enter the numbers here of 1 and 3, which are the customer IDs in the orders table. But it's better to look those numbers up from the table. So inside the brackets, we can write a select query to say, select the customer ID from the orders table. This is our subquery. When this runs, it should find the values of 1 and 3 and then the main query or outer query here will exclude those customers with an ID of one or three. Let's run it. We can see it is accepted. We scroll down and see the two rows of Henry and Max, which match the expected output. This is another way we can solve this problem. If you're wondering which method is the one I would recommend, I'll explain that later in the video. For now, let's look at solution number three. Another way to solve this is with a slightly different subquery and a different keyword. Instead of the not in keyword, we can use a keyword called not exists. The not exists keyword will look at the data inside the subquery and use it to determine which rows to include in the result. To do this, we first change the where customers.id not in to say where not exists. We can leave the subquery the same and run the query we see the result of wrong answer. This is because there are no rows shown in our results and we expect the two rows. What happened? Well, the subquery has selected rows from the orders table. It has found two rows and the not exists keyword has used these two rows to say something has been found, so I won't show any data. So when we use the not exists keyword, we need to relate the rows in the subquery to the outer query. To do this, we can use a WHERE clause to match the order's customer ID to the customer's ID value. This query should then try to match the orders to the customers, and if an order for each customer is found, it is not shown. 
Let's run the query. We can see it is accepted. If the expected results match our results. So that's the third way that I can see to solve this problem. We've seen three solutions to this problem. Which one do I recommend that you use? I would say go with option one, which uses the left join, or maybe even option two with the not in keyword. I try to avoid subqueries if a join can achieve the same thing. The not in solution also works and may be more efficient depending on the amount of data involved. Option three with not exists is a bit more complicated, but may perform better than not in, especially with larger data sets. So if you're doing this for your project, you may want to test all three methods to see how they perform and if they work for you. Two of the solutions used subqueries, so you'll want to watch this video next to learn why you would want to use a subquery and see some examples. Thanks for watching.